are you a new player to Smite? Perhaps you've played a few games and have no idea what's happening, or you're confused by everything that you see. Well, look no further. This video will be the first in a series to introduce brand new players to the game, covering all of the basics in a way that's hopefully easy to understand for people who've never seen or played a MOBA before. Smite is a complex game, and without guidance myself, I think even I'd have given up after a few weeks. I've now played the game for over five years, and think it's time to pass on some of the information I've gained to new players. A list of things I wish I'd known, perhaps, that could make a huge difference to how you learn or understand the core mechanics of the game. So coming up is a list that will hopefully work for you straight away in improving both your understanding and how you play the game. Before we get started, and due to the nature of MOBAs, I need to drop this disclaimer to stop the inevitable comments that this video will receive from more experienced players. I am by no means the best player in the world, but I do have five years of playing experience. And while you may disagree with some of the things I mention, remember who this guide is aimed at, new players. So if there's a technique or strategy that I use that you do differently, please don't flood the comments arguing. I'm trying to build a starting point for players, which they can then build and expand on themselves when they understand the game better. So let's get started. The first thing any new player to the game should learn is exactly what the game is about. So for a very brief overview, Smite is a five versus five MOBA where you play as one of over a hundred gods, each with their own unique abilities. There are a number of game modes, but really the main game mode that Smite is all about is Conquest. However, Conquest is both incredibly complex and near impossible to understand for new players. So for the rest of this guide, I will focus on Arena which acts like a team deathmatch style mode and a much easier way to learn the very basics of the game. Your team of five gods will be made up of different classes, each with a different role and specific playstyle. You start each game between level 1 or 5, depending on the game mode, and you rank up to a maximum of level 20. Throughout the game, you earn XP to level up, allowing you to rank up one ability per level, with each ability having a maximum of five ranks. You also earn gold, which is used to buy items each game. For now, think of items like a mini skill tree. They boost your stats and give you a passive effect for your character, depending on which ones you buy. I'll go into much more detail on classes, items and builds later, so don't worry. The aforementioned gold and XP is earned by killing enemies, taking objectives if you're playing Clash, Assault or Conquest, or by clearing the AI controlled minions that you see walking down the middle of the map in each game mode. So with the basics covered, now we can move on to more tips based around gameplay and understanding the mechanics of the game. So first off, we're going to make some changes to the controls and layouts of your game. While you may wonder why I'm bringing this up first, it's because any good player will turn these off eventually, so why not just get it out of the way now? At this point, you'll notice I'm on console, so PC players may already have these settings in place. Smite has two built-in mechanics for new players, auto buy items and auto level up abilities. While these aren't terrible as it allows you to just focus on playing, the items they build for you are often not optimal and it may rank up abilities that you don't want or ones that are not ideal. So we're going to turn both of these off. This is done when you are about to enter a game in the God Select screen. There is a small icon at the bottom here and if you press left stick on Xbox then it will bring up this option. Just turn both of these to off. What this means is that you now manually level up your abilities and manually buy items in the game store. While a little daunting for new players, it will help you develop an understanding of items far more quickly. For most gods, there are abilities that you want to level up before others, so this allows you to optimise your character from the get-go. Now, when you level up, you choose which ability to rank up, and you buy items from the in-game shop when you are in the fountain. Next, I suggest you turn on quick cast, which means to cast abilities, you hold to aim and release to fire. This replaces the default system, which means you have to press once to aim and once more to fire. This is too slow and will cause you to die in more important moments, so just get rid. Next, and this only applies to console, change your control scheme to savage, which adds the abilities to your bumpers instead of your A, B, X and Y. Again, this makes life easier when you aim the abilities. With this control scheme, if you need to cancel any currently aimed ability, just press B. 
And finally, go to your settings and increase your map size to the maximum. Map knowledge is absolutely essential in this game. So let's make life easier for yourself from the start and make it as big as possible. My next tip is to not play Conquest yet. I can already hear some people raging at that very statement. While Conquest is the entire point of Smite, it's the game mode which the whole game is based around, it is incredibly tricky. And if you don't understand even the basics of the game, you'll struggle massively and you just won't enjoy it. If you've never played a first person shooter before, you wouldn't jump straight into rank search and destroy on Call of Duty. So let's learn to walk before we can run. Let's stick with Arena for a few hours first until you understand the very fundamentals of the game. Next up is a big one. Let's look at the five classes and understand what they are for. There are 100 plus gods in this game, divided up into five classes. Every god has three abilities, plus one ultimate ability, plus the ability to perform basic attacks, which can be either ranged for mages and hunters, or melee for everybody else. Each of these classes has a different role within the game, and playing this role effectively separates any class of players, even at the top level. The entire roster of gods can be found on the home screen by simply clicking on the gods tab here. As you can see, all the gods are nicely and neatly divided up into their individual classes, but there is a lot of them. So to help out, I've listed the classes here and what is expected of them. First up is Guardian. Guardian are your tank classes. They are big, bulky and difficult to kill. As a Guardian, you are expected to do the following. Initiate fights, protect your mages and hunters, buy items that support your team and set up kills for your damage dealers. Personally, I think support is the hardest class to master, as you need to be aware of everything that's going on. A team without a support is immediately at a disadvantage. While only certain guardians are used to do damage, on the whole you are there to protect, so make sure you do. Assassins are exactly as they sound. Assassins. They do big damage, but have low health and defence. Their job is to secure kills, ideally to the enemy mages and hunters. The biggest mistake I see people make with assassins is just running in over and over and repeatedly dying. A good assassin should strike when the moment is right, such as when a fight has already started and the enemy is focusing somewhere else, or if you catch an enemy alone and out of position. An assassin running into group fights alone will always be given a quick trip back to base and a very easy kill gifted to the enemy. While of course there are many ways to play assassins, on the whole the best of the best are the ones who are only seen by the enemy when it's already too late. Hunters are the main source of damage in your team, especially late game. They can destroy the enemy in just a few basic attacks or abilities, but similar to assassins, they can also be quite squishy. In big team fights, they should be protected so they can dish out the damage, and the enemy hunter should be one of your priorities to kill first. Hunters generally start the game quite slow, but once the late game arrives, they can decimate the enemy team, so make sure you play so accordingly. Mages are also damage dealers. However, instead of single target damage like hunters and assassins, mages mostly do big damage over a big area. Some mages can also heal or buff your team, and their ultimate abilities usually control how a team fight goes. Like hunters, they should be protected, and the enemy mage should be targeted. The longer a team fight goes on where the mage is alive, the better that team's chances are of winning. As a result, expect the enemy hunter or assassin to come straight for you. Take note guardians, keep your mage alive. If you are playing mage, try to stay out of danger and stay at the back out of harm's way. Just let your abilities do all the damage. Warrior is the class I play the most. They are the all round type of god. They can do a little bit of each role, but to be played effectively, I think they should be played as a frontliner. This means the usual rules apply. They are tanky, they control the fights, but they can also dish out a little bit of damage too. Think like a guardian, but a little bit more squishy, but in return can do a little bit more damage. Your job here is to be at the front initiating the fight, targeting the enemy damage dealers, but if your mage or hunters need help, you need to switch out and protect them. However, the beauty of warriors is they can be manipulated to suit whatever role the situation requires, and they can still perform quite effectively. I will certainly do more in-depth guides on the classes in future, as it's a lot more complex than I've made out here, so keep an eye out. So, now it's time to pick a god. So for someone who has just picked up the game, 
My advice would be to read the description of the classes as I've just mentioned and pick one that you like the sound of. Then go into the God Select screen. From here you can see each of the God's three abilities, their passive and their ultimate. Knowing your passive, knowing your ability combos and knowing when to use your ult should be the first thing you want to learn on any God. On the topic of ultimates, so many people I see just use their ultimate as soon as it's off cooldown. This is a really bad habit. There's a correct time for every single ult, so let's try and find yours for your god. When you do see a god that takes your fancy, we need to take them into the practice arena and get a good feel of what their abilities do. So, go on to jungle practice from the main menu. When in game, you can also read the ability descriptions in case you're unsure. On Xbox, this is done by pressing up on the D-pad. Now of course, all of this may be a daunting prospect for new players, so soon I'll be releasing a video with a starter's guide to a god from each class to help you out. But for simplicity's sake, there are some gods that I think are quite easy to pick up. So, one for each class are as follows. Guardian, I think Ymir. Assassin, Fenrir. Hunter, Neath. Mage, Ra and Warrior Hercules. Now you have chosen your god, you'll need to know what items to build on them during the game. As I mentioned earlier, think of items as miniature skill trees that grant passive effects once you buy them. One thing I should mention here is that smite gods are split into two categories, magical or physical. Some items are only available to magical gods and some only to physical, whereas some others are available to everybody. Mages and Guardians are the magical gods, meaning they deal only magical damage and will have access to the magical items, whereas Hunters, Warriors and Assassins are physical and the same rules apply. To be honest, I could do an entire hour long video on items and it still wouldn't be enough. I probably will do one in the future, but it's such an important part of the game that I can't not mention the key points in this guide here. Buying the correct items really can be the difference between winning and losing a game. Now, in theory, there is no incorrect items, as good players will make any build work, but there are certainly things that you should and shouldn't do. Items are split into tiers, most of the time ending in a tier 3 item. Before buying any item, check what its stats offer you, just hover over the tier 3 version of the item to check. As mentioned, it takes a good while to get used to items, so here are some quick tips when buying them for your first few games. Number 1. Until you branch out and start playing Conquest, or you have a good understanding of how items work, buy Boots as your first item. 99% of players will have Boots of either their first or second item, and there's a reason for this. They are cheap, they give good stats early in the game, so don't forget yours. Number 2. Buy items applicable to your class and character strengths. If you're playing tank, build up that defense and health, be a tankier tank. Playing mage, make sure you've got good magical damage in your build. Is your character a healer? Then buy items to boost healing. This may seem obvious, but I see a lot of players building items that just aren't applicable to their character. Number 3. Build to counter your opponent. One mistake I see even good players make is they refuse to counter build their opponent. They get too fixated on their preset build with just doing more damage, and they ignore the fact they are 0 and 8. If the enemy mage is destroying you, then throw a magical defense item into your build. If the enemy has a healer, buy an anti-heal item. My own personal rule of thumb is I reserve at least one item slot in my build to counter anything the enemy team is doing. Number 4. Finish one item before starting another. This is the main reason we turn off auto buy, because it starts buying a new item before you've reached the tier 3 of your first. This ruins your game by leaving you underpowered, so make sure you finish building one before you move to the next. Tier 3 items are so much better than tier 2, just looking at the stats of these items will show you that. Number 5. Experiment and be flexible. Don't stick to the same 6 items every single game in the same order, change it up if it needs it. For each god you should have a pool of around 20 items that you use depending on your situation. Of course, two or three of these will be the same every game if it's a core item to your character. That's fine, but don't get stuck with a predictable build. The enemy may have already built to counter you. Number six, make a pre-made build. On the god information screen, you'll see a tab called item builder. This is where you can place items in a way that they will come up on the first page of your in-game shop. I use this myself to put items I regularly use for each of my gods. 
From this menu, you can read the description of the items and see if they are applicable to your god. Don't worry about the titles that you see here where it says defense and starter etc. They're just arbitrary and they're only there to help you organize. In theory, you could fill every slot with a defense item if you wanted. But make use of this screen as it saves time scrolling through the shop when you're in the game. For the last part of the item section, I'll briefly mention relics. Relics are multi-use items with long cooldowns. They are free and you can choose one at the start of the game and a second one at level 12. However, they can also be upgraded for 500 gold should you wish. Relics can turn the tide of a fight. They are used at clutch moments to save you or an ally's life, to counter an enemy ult, or to close distance quickly to escape or secure a kill. As I said, make sure you read the descriptions and understand how your relic works before you head into the game. My next step is to play defensively to begin with. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make is repeatedly running in over and over and dying. Because of the nature of MOBAs, dying repeatedly gives the enemy gold, XP and puts them ahead of you, meaning they'll be a higher level, will have more items and the next fight will be even harder for you. You'll hear people refer to this as feeding, as you are effectively making the game harder for you and your entire team. If you've died repeatedly to the same person in the same situation, each fight after that is only going to get worse and worse. Learn from your mistakes and take your time. Smite is a hard game, don't feed. My next tip and final tip is probably the most important of any on this list. Don't get angry. Unfortunately, any gaming community can be toxic and Smite is definitely no different. You need to ignore other players who may be spamming you in the chat or being abusive and just work on improving your own game. And try not to get tilted yourself. If you don't understand why you died, your ability didn't work or something confusing happened, just take it as a lesson. Believe me, Smite is an incredibly complex game and four years on, there's even things that I don't understand. Watch a guide, read what abilities do, read what items do and learn from your mistakes. Take every defeat as a lesson, and as cheesy as that sounds, it works. Being toxic puts off new players who are trying to learn a difficult game and the community suffers because of it. So don't rise to it, don't perform it yourself to others. Yes, it is frustrating when one teammate is feeding or playing badly, but be constructive and not further enhance the situation. So that concludes what will be in the first in a line of videos to help new players get to grips with the game. If you have any questions then fire them in the comments below or find me on Twitter and send me a message. I also stream most nights so you can find me on Twitch and watch me do play alongs. Or you can even add me on Xbox directly and we can partner up and I'll try and teach you what I can. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the guide and want to support the channel, like and subscribe and you can follow me on the other platforms on the screen now. Thanks again.